In this video, I'm going to show you must have Google Slides add-ons for teachers. Google Slides add-ons are third-party apps that add additional functionality to your Google Slides. Some of the add-ons that I'm going to show you in this video will allow you to add different features to your Google Slides, and some are even more powerful and will make your Google Slides presentations interactive with your students. I've only chosen to show entirely free add-ons in this video or add-ons that do have some paid features but have enough functionality with the free version that I don't think it's necessary to pay for an upgrade. Just like Google Chrome extensions, these slides add-ons can make your life as a teacher significantly better and can improve your teaching practice. I'm excited to show you in this video what they're all about. If you appreciate the tips that I share in this video, please show your support by hitting the like button, sharing it with other teachers that you know, and subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly updates. If you think that I missed any important add-ons for teachers in this video, or if you have a question about any of the add-ons that I show, please ask in the comments below. The very first thing you'll need to do is open up a Google Slides presentation. So first I'll go up to the waffle, select Google Drive, then I'm going to pick a slides presentation that I've already created, or you could choose to make a new one. In the menu bar on Google Slides, you'll notice that there is a button for add-ons. When you click add-ons, you'll see a list of all the add-ons that are already installed on Google Slides. And in order to get new ones, you're going to scroll down to get add-ons. There you can either scroll through the different add-ons that are available, or you can use the search box to search for a specific add-on that you're looking for. I'll be including direct links to all the add-ons that I show in the video description below. When you find an add-on that you want to install, simply click on it and then go through the process of installing the app. Some are quite quick to install and others will make you go to another website in order to sign up for an account. And then if you decide that you no longer want to have an add-on installed, just go back to manage add-ons, find the add-on that you want to remove, and then you can uninstall it. All right, the first few add-ons that I'm going to show you are about changing the appearance and adding different elements to your slides. The first is Unsplash. Unsplash is also a website that has a bunch of free images that you can take and use without worrying about copyright infringement. Plus the pictures on Unsplash are really cool and unique and will definitely add a different flair to your Google Slides. So to get an image, just go up to Add-ons, select Unsplash, then you'll see the Unsplash menu pull up as a sidebar on the right hand side of the screen. At the top, you can search for an image that you're looking for. And then when you find one, simply select it and it will add that image to your slide. The default size will cover the entire size of your slide, but you could move that image around and also add text on top of the image as well. So it's pretty much the exact same thing as adding a different background to your Google slide. The next add-on is Extensus Fonts. Extensus Fonts does what its name suggests and gives you a ton of different fonts to choose from that normally would not be available in Google Slides. So you can see when I open up this add-on that it will pop up a sidebar menu. And from there, I have tons of different fonts that I can choose from. So anytime you've seen people using slides that have these really cool fonts, they've probably gotten it from using this add-on. So here you can see that it's really easy to use. All I have to do is highlight the text and then pick some different fonts that I want to try out. So you can see how all these different fonts will definitely add a different dynamic to the slides that you make, as opposed to some of the more kind of regular boring fonts that are available in Google Slides. The next add-on is Flat Icon. Flat Icon allows you to add different types of icons to your Google Slides. So you'll see that when I open up Flat Icon, there's a menu where I can choose to look for different types of icons that I might want to add. Some of the icons are part of the premium version. You can tell that because of the little crown that's next to the icon, but there are enough free icons that are available that I don't think it's necessary to pay for the premium version unless you really want to use all those different types of icons. So to add the icon, select it, and then choose to insert it in the slides. Once the icon is inserted, you can resize it and drag it around wherever you'd like. The next two add-ons are great for foreign language teachers or just teachers that need to use multiple languages in a single slide deck. The first is Slides Translator, which does what it sounds like and will help you translate text from one language to another. When you open up Slides Translator, you'll see that you're given some different options in the sidebar for which language to translate the original text to. Then all you need to do is highlight the text, select the language, 
then it will populate a translation of that language. I know that not all of the auto translators work all that well, but this one seems to be relatively accurate. And if there are some small mistakes that you recognize, you can of course fix those as well. The next add-on is called Early Accents. Early Accents allows you to add accents that would appear in different languages. For example, here where it says, hola, como estas, I'm missing two accents that I would normally need in order for it to be written correctly in Spanish. So to get those accents, I'm just going to click on the add-on, select the language that I need the accent for, and then choose the letter with the accent, and it will add that into my text in the same format and font size that the text was originally in. The next add-on is called Hypatia. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And what it does is allows you to add different mathematical equations directly into Google Slides. You'll see when I open the add-on that I'm able to easily build an accurate mathematical equation. I can do things like adding exponents and other mathematical symbols that normally wouldn't be available for you on a typical keyboard. Once you're done and you're ready to add the equation to your slides, just click insert and it will show up directly on your Google slide where you can rearrange it and also resize it as needed. The last three add-ons that I'm going to show you will significantly change the functionality of your Google Slides by making them interactive. One of those add-ons is Pear Deck for Google Slides, which is definitely one of my favorite add-ons. I actually have an entirely separate tutorial about all of the features of Pear Deck, so I'm only going to show some of it here. And if you want to learn all about how to use Pear Deck, I definitely recommend that you check out my separate tutorial. You'll see on the side menu after you've opened Pear Deck, that there are different options for the interactivity tools that you can add to your Google Slides. One of those tools is that you're able to record and insert audio directly into the slide. I know people are always looking for different extensions and apps that allow you to add different audio files. And so it's really cool that Pear Deck has that directly built into their app. So to record the audio, all you need to do is click add audio to slide, record what you want to say. So you could give students some instructions here, for example and then add that audio file to the slide. And in a moment, I'm gonna show you what this is gonna look like on the student end so you can see how a student could actually listen to the audio. You'll also see on the menu that a couple of the options have a little crown underneath them, and those are premium Pear Deck features. I do really like those features, but it's also okay to not necessarily have them if you're only able to use the free version. So let's say, for example, that I want to ask my students to respond to a question that I've written in text. Then in order to create an interactive question, I'm just going to select text. That will add the interactive question to the Pear Deck. And again, you'll see what that looks like on the student end in just a moment. When you're ready to begin the lesson, go up to start lesson. You can see here that you also have the option to set this up as a live lesson or to have students move through the slides on their own pace during asynchronous learning. It's important to note that students do not need separate accounts in order to get into Pear Deck. The only person who needs to set up an account is the teacher. So here you can see on this split screen that after a student goes to joinpd.com and enters the class code, the teacher will see that students have joined the lesson and can then choose to begin the class. When the teacher begins the lesson, they are in complete control over which slide appears on the student's screen. Then when I actually get to the interactive slide, students can see the audio file in the bottom corner of their slide that they can select in order to listen to what I recorded. And then they can also choose answer question in order to answer the question that I posed on my slide. And then on the teacher end, you can select show responses to see the different answers that students have written. Those answers will come in anonymous and will actually be posted live as students are writing them. The next interactivity add-on is called Slido. Slido has some different functionality from Pear Deck that I think makes it worth taking a look at as well. After you've opened up Slido, you'll see that there are some different options for the types of questions that you could ask your students or your audience to answer. So you can do things like ask your audience different poll questions, and then you can also choose the way in which your audience would respond. So let's look at the word cloud right now, because that's a really cool option. So I could write a question like, what did you think about today's lesson? When I'm ready to poll my audience, I'm going to select present with Slido. Participants don't need an account in order to answer the question. They just need to enter the code that you presented on your screen. Then they can enter their name as well as their answer to the question. And you'll see when they answer the question that that's also going to show up immediately 
on the teacher slide as well. And then as more people start to answer the question with different responses, you'll see that it also creates a word cloud where the most frequent answers show up as the largest text. In addition to a poll question, you can also ask your students a quiz question. So here you would first write the question and then select the different answer choices. And just like the poll question, students would enter Slido by entering the class code, then they would answer the quiz question that you asked. On the teacher end, you can see the number of students that responded, as well as who responded, and then you can show how many people in the class selected which answer, as well as which answer was correct. The last, and I'd argue most powerful and definitive must-have add-on for Google Slides is the Nearpod add-on. Nearpod does have a paid program that has a lot of other features, but their add-on also gives teachers a lot for free. You'll see on the sidebar menu that there are all kinds of different elements that you can add to your slides from Nearpod. It's not just interactivity tools, there's lots of content that you can directly add here as well. So for example, you could add video content. So here I'm going to select to add a video about ancient Greece. You can also add a collaborative slide which works very similar to Padlet, where students will post their responses and be able to see each other's responses posted directly to a bulletin board. So here I'm going to write a question about the video that I just added that I want my students to respond to. Then there are also tools like the Draw It tool where you could give your students a prompt and then have them draw their response to a question. So since we're talking about Greece, I could have them do something like draw Athens or draw something like the Parthenon here. And a tool I really love is the field trip tool. When you select the field trip tool, it will add different 360 degree images to the Google Slides. And then another really cool function is fill in the blanks. With fill in the blanks, you can type out a sentence using keywords that you want your students to be able to fill in. So here I'm going to write a sentence related to ancient Greece. Then on the next slide, I can select all the keywords that I want students to be able to drag and drop into my fill in the blank sentence. And lastly, I'm going to show you the quiz tool, which you could use as an exit ticket. So what you do here is write your quiz question, create your answer choices, and that will add a multiple choice question to the Google Slides. Once you're ready to actually present the Nearpod lesson with students, you're going to click Save and go to Nearpod. Once in Nearpod, you'll see the lesson show up, and just like with Pear Deck, you'll have the option to either create this as a live lesson or set it up to be student paced. Then you have different options for how you can share the link directly to students. Just like Pear Deck and Slido, students don't actually need to have Nearpod accounts in order to use the program. And then once students get the link, either from Google Classroom or another way that you're sharing it with them, they can enter directly into the Nearpod lesson and proceed through the slides at their own pace if you set it up that way. So here you can see that the student is able to play the video that I embedded on the slide. And then on the next slide, they're able to answer the question about what they learned while watching the video and post that to a bulletin board. Then for the draw it prompt, Students have different drawing tools that they can use in order to draw their response. And then for the field trip function, students can look around at the 360 degree image, or they can choose the virtual reality option in order to see this in VR. Then for the fill in the blanks, you'll see that students have different keywords that they can drag into the sentence. And to end, there's a multiple choice question that students can answer to show what they've learned in the lesson. And right after students respond, they'll be able to see whether or not they got the answer to that question correctly. Okay, so those were must-have Google Slides add-ons for teachers. Some obviously are much more involved with others, but I think each one is worth taking a look at, whether you're looking to improve the appearance of your Google Slides, to add different features to them, or to totally change the functionality of a Google Slides lesson and make them more interactive. If you have any questions or comments about any of these add-ons, please ask in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my video to the end. If you found the tips that I shared helpful, please share it with other teachers that you know, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly updates. You can also check out some of the other tutorials I have on my channel by clicking on one of those two videos above. And if you're interested in downloading any of the resources that I've created and show on my videos, 
please visit my website at www.newedtechclassroom.com. Lastly, if you want to check me out on social media, my Twitter handle, Facebook page, and Pinterest account are all in the description below. Thanks so much and have a great week.